Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's a big week. We are so excited. We have some crazy fucking news. We just got picked up. This podcast is now going to be exclusively available on Truth Social. <laughs> Donald Trump's social media. <laughs> lo- Wait, it's called Truth Social? Truth Social, yeah, or Gab is the other place. 4chan will still have us. <laughs> But you will not be able to get this podcast at Apple Podcasts. By the way. That's not true. If anybody out there listens to our podcast on Spotify, Mm -hmm. apparently Spotify is the number one place people are getting podcasts now. How about that? that? Yeah. Spotify. So so all that all that uh, nonsense or all that um, what's the word? Drama. It doesn't seem to have affected their bottom line. I definitely don't mean to call Neil Young taking his catalog and canon off of Spotify. Drama. Dra- well, I don't mean to call. It, yeah, I don't want to be like judgmental about it. Listen, everybody can do what they want, but here's what we. Because we are in no judgment zone. This is a no judgment zone, but this is uh, a we, very. Do we judge Trump supporters? No, you do. Maybe I don't. <laughs> if they're no, here's how I judge them. If they are listeners of this podcast, they're cool. If okay, if you're a listener of this podcast, no matter what your political views, religious views, if you're racist. Uh, if you, uh, if you are, even if you commit violent crimes, you're welcome here. Cause there's a no judgment zone. If you don't listen to this podcast and you uh, adhere to my views on everything and are doing righteous work in the community, you're a piece of shit and you don't deserve life. So basically you got to listen to this podcast in order for me to accept you. I don't think we should, we should say that we're okay. If people are racist, I am making what I hope is an obvious joke about how much I like it when people listen to this podcast. And here's how much we like the people that listen to our podcast. We are about to give you a fucking crazy opportunity to no longer hear advertisements on this podcast. But that's not all, is it, Natasha? No, we are launching our Patreon. We are launching a Patreon. Go look at our Patreon. We've got a lot of funny things on there. The thing that I'm excited about. Well, let's tell, take them through the tears, baby girl. Oh, we have to tell. They can go find out for themselves. We don't want to take them through the tears. Okay, tell it. Talk, talk we, to them. We got tears up in here. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. You want to hear tier one? You said, what were you saying you were excited about? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, well, that's in tier three. And you'll probably tell me. But I was just going to mention that we're going to have a dinner party. Okay, yeah. You're definitely getting to the to the fatty, the fatty, <laughs> boom, batty uh, but, uh, opportunities. But listening with no ads is pretty high level. Okay, that's level one. Tier then you one. you listen to more podcasts. Tier one, you guys, if you're tired of listening to ads, even though all of our sponsors are so dope, we just got new brooches and my teeth are freaking <laughs> sparkling clean. But tier one is only five books a month. Five dollars. Think about what you spend five dollars on a day. You probably spend $5 a day on pornography alone. For $5 a month, I'm doing this new thing where I mispronounce words. Do you like it? No, I actually don't like it. You don't you dislike it? Yeah, I dislike it. Okay. Well, anyway, for $5 a month, <laughs> you get a weekly extended cut of The Secret Dumps. Every week. You get ad-free versions of Monday's episodes. Well, let, wait, let's take them through what that means. Okay. That means what, what once was... Three secrets on Friday, you get a fatty five secret discount. Five secrets, five dollars. Okay, if you paid a dollar a secret, like a car dealer, don't you just want to tell people what we're doing and yeah. move on? I wanted to do it in kind of a fun podcasty comedy okay. way. For for only five dollars, if you paid one dollar a secret, then you would have paid your <laughs> monthly membership on week one, and all fifteen remaining secrets that month are yours to keep for free. Sign me up. What else do they get in tier one for only foof doulers a month? They get to vote on content elements of the show. That's right. Our producer. Secret and advice only. You cannot chime in on our fights. Yeah. Well, you chime in on our fights anyway. And usually you side with Natasha. Uh, you get uh, you get ad free versions of the podcast on Mon- uh, for Monday episodes. And you get priority picking for advice submissions if you wanted to come on. Because people sometimes don't get picked. And mm-hmm. this would make you able, to, I guess we would. Ha- no matter how boring your problems are, we would have to interview you. Well, it actually, our producer, Laura, who has, we just found out, crippling obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> put into it, she put in that tier selection not guaranteed. Producer will look at these questions first. So oh, if you, good. Thank you, Laura. If that, will, that will help the if, if you're writing in level some, of the show with some old bullshit, just trying to get on the, <laughs> on the screen, Laura's not going to have that. She's got OCD. Okay. 
Take them through tier two, Natasha. Tier two, uh, we, oh, this is something that's going to be very fun. By the way, tier one yes. is called the staycation tier. We don't know why, but it is. Well, tier two? Uh, we are going to. It's called? Oh, it's called Desert Getaway. The Desert Getaway. Come to the desert with us. And with the Desert Getaway, Moshe and I will look at your dating app profile and yeah. consult you and make it better. Maybe we'll even like yep. make you seem a little more funny and charming than yep. you are. Maybe it could attract people. Maybe you're saying something on there that is mm-hmm. like a funky, huge amber flag. Or, amber flag. I never heard that before. You know, it's not that bad, but, but it's like, eh, if you really thought about it. An amber flag is when you find shit in your bed, right? <laughs> Okay, so that's tier two desert getaway. You get all the stuff in tier one. Plus, uh, you get that dating app profile. Plus, you get a 10% discount on all merchandise. And this is pretty cool. Mm. After three months of membership, what do you get, Natasha? Take them through it. Oh, yes. Uh, we will give you a video message. Yep. We will We will give you what is unable to be accessed on Cameo because we don't do Cameo. Only for our listeners. No, Cameo would love us to uh, do that. And I it always seemed very false to me. But I feel like if it was a podcast listener. For, for our people, for the honeymooners. Yeah, it's a little different. Because I know that we share something a little more. You know all of Moshe's um, flaws. And here is the, uh, here's the biggest bonus of all in oh Tier 2. Oh, my God. Why is this on here? I asked Laura to put it on. No, you get Moshe. first access to any future DJ mixtapes that I... nobody wants this. I don't know if that's true. I guarantee... Um, okay, maybe like 5% of our... Who listens to a DJ mixtape? Wouldn't you like it if your favorite podcast co-host oh my God. also <laughs> released a mixtape of electronic music that you could study to or dance to? Oh, you're saying the mixtape... You list, You put it on when you're writing because you're always yeah. listening to techno music. But would you want to listen to your your music's like pretty funky? That does Thank not you, seem honey. like. Here's the thing about you DJing is like you're like too good. Like Ooh, you're so I like you, the sound of that. Well, you're not like awful, but you're good enough that you might take it seriously. The and truth that concerns is, me. The truth is, I, I you're good at scratching. I didn't want to. T- to, uh, release this information on the same week as the Patreon, but you know what? Maybe the time has come. The truth is, folks. I did get a DJ uh, a DJ um, console. I, I got one, and I've been mixing. I it's it's happened, <laughs> and um, you immediately had like a video camera, like like hooked up with a stand, like uh, like above you to live stream you doing it all. I haven't started live streaming yet, but I just might do that. That was um, like your first thing. Was like I got to get that video going. Here's the crazy thing. Okay, okay. I I, I put it like this. I let's say when I was young. I was unbelievable at, at making love, okay? Every woman that I ever made love to had multiple orgasms, right? And then I got convicted of larceny, right? And I got sent to jail for 20 years. And I was in prison for 20 years and I was working on other stuff and focusing on other stuff. And then I got out and I was nervous, you know? I said, I want to fuck again. I, I feel like fucking again. I'm still horny, but can I fuck the way that I used to fuck the Casanova that I was 15 years ago? And then I met you after I got released. What are you talking about? I'm about to get to a really fun punchline that you're going to probably shit on and not, uh, not laugh at. And then I met you and I took you home and trembling, I took your clothes off and nervously, I took my clothes off and I entered you. And as soon as I entered you, I was like, oh my God, I completely remember how to do this. And I am such a good fucker. And you're like, what? I thought you hadn't had sex in 15 years. How did you last for over four hours? How did you bring me to rolling climaxes nine times? And I said, you know what? It was in me. That's how I feel with DJ. I got my console. The moment I began, I go, oh yeah, I remember how to do this. And oh yeah, I am skilled at this. Is that the punchline? Yeah, that was the end of the story. Okay, here's a question. Yeah. Um, but that's not true. You didn't spend 15 years not having sex before you met me. No, honey, it was um, a, a, a silly analogy. Uh, but I thought you were kind of trying to make a point. I was. You're- I didn't DJ for 20 years. I put the turntables away because when a, when a man becomes a man, he puts away childish things. Mm. And then 20 years later. But when a man becomes a father, he, re- that's <laughs> he revisits those things. <laughs> no, when a man has a child, he becomes a child again. Ah, uh, I see. Right? I wrote my book 
I, I did that whole chapter about rave music and my life in the rave scene in the Bay Area as a young man. It rekindled a flame. I bought a DJ console. Actually, there was a bit of a hiccup because somebody said they were going to give me the DJ console for free. We went back and forth. The guy was very nice. So it didn't end did up working out. This. But then I ended up going and having to pay for it myself. I found a very nice British man that I met on OfferUp. And I turned that thing on and I remembered that I was good at it. And it felt good. And how do you like it that your daughter says to me, mommy, daddy's up DJing. Yes, I love that. I'm like, where's daddy? She's like, he's up DJing. Yeah, isn't that nice? Isn't that cute? (laughs) So in tier two, you get to see, you get to have first access to hearing my midlife crisis in real time. Um, And that is for only $10 a month to get all of that stuff. Tier three, it's our VIP tier. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to go there. You know, this is called the spa retreat tier. And you get uh, for twenty five bucks a month. Twenty five dollars, you get everything in the last two tiers. A mystery box of our merchandise. We're sending you shit. We're sending you straight up shit. I mean, not shit. I mean, we're straight up sending you stuff. And Good, cool stuff. Twenty percent, twenty percent on all mer- off all merch. But the real thing that's cool uh, is that we're gonna have a dinner party. We're gonna have a quarterly Zoom dinner party with our listeners, and you zoom in. We're gonna eat dinner together. You, we can chat. I might even DJ. You know, no, I, no, no, I might, I might. We can make that different. I might though. I might, I might do that. So you that. can witness uh, us fighting over me trying to have a dinner party and Moshe trying to if just don't record it. If anybody came to um to our uh, live stream that we did of the podcast, the VIP, the people that stuck around, those people, we all went around and we were just talking about something that we were working on that year, and it felt really good. It felt really like a community. We want to build that community through this Patreon. And that's for 25 bucks a month. Uh, you also will get free signed copies of Moshe, of, of my and Natasha's upcoming books that are being released. Natasha's is, of course, called... The World Deserves My Children. And if you don't want to sign up for this $25 tier, you could pre-order the book. But that is coming out in November. What's of, the name of your book? You know, it's still to be determined. You know what? Maybe, here's a really cool idea. Maybe if you sign up, for this $25 a month tier and you come to our first quarterly um, Zoom dinner, which will be held in August, I will pitch the uh, the people at the dinner the different uh, names that I have and that I'm considering and we can figure out, we can crowdsource what I should call my book. Also, I like that. And I also, you know, a Zoom part, a Zoom dinner party that's so like retro pandemic. Uh, t- totally. So we're we're like taking it back. Aspect. I love to recall the nostalgia <laughs> of that early pandemic time. But we're still like, I'm still doing so much Zoom that it does feel like something. Um, and here is tier four. Tier four is $100 a month. Laura doesn't know about this and neither does <laughs> Natasha. But this is, you get everything from tiers one, two, and three, but... You get to be in Moshe's threesome? You can be in my threesome. <laughs> or if that's not something you're interested in, because we're a very consensual, we want you to want all this stuff, you can, I will give you a private link and you can watch me J-O. Moshe. Are you what? What? Stop it. No, one time a quarter. <laughs> I'll J-O. Every fortnight. I'll, I'll J-O while I DJ. So DJ J-O. That's a DJJO tier. That's for $100 a month. Okay, that's a joke. Moshe, I have a question. What do you get from DJing? Uh, Natasha, thank you for asking. Because whenever I tell people, they're like, oh, he wants to start doing parties. And I'm like, no, he's doing it in his room. A friggin' break from from your yapping. No, here's what I get from from DJing. I turn my, br- my, turn my brain off. It's like meditation, but it's instant. The minute I start doing that, I just check out. And I'm just like thinking about the mix and thinking about the music. Okay. It sounds a little corny as I say it like that, but it's true. I'm not thinking about anything. I'll be I'm not like stressing. doing dishes and there's like pumping techno. Thank like, you so much. Like my teenage son lives upstairs. Thank you so much again. <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm not. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> oof, oof. It's like, it's Whoa, like a, I love that track. It's like a, I feel like I used to work at this place called shelter in Chicago, like a total mm. techno club. And mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was really, really young. I'll tell you what, I'm not playing cheesy brings music. Me back. I'm not playing cheesy music. I'm playing pretty like pretty, pretty beauty, beautiful, complicated stuff. I feel like I'm at the W hotel when like, no, it's not W hotel. No, music. no, 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 no. It's not W hotel elevator. It's W hotel. When like someone's having like, like some celebrities having a huge party. No, there. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like uh, a DJ got hired at the W hotel and they're playing a set. That's going to get them fired. 
Because the assistant manager is like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, no, no. We need like really accessible. Oh, you loungy. think it's like super indie, hard. It's hard. Techno. Okay. But it's good though. It's beautiful. I might, it's beautiful. I gotta tell you, the stuff I'm playing right now, I'm oh excited about it. Oh, wait, hold on. I walked in yesterday and they the the track was because you know it's always like a woman singing, like da 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 da. No. Like in the background. No, not true. And what she was singing. What was she singing? Um, I don't play a lot of singing lady music, just so you know. She was singing. Maybe the the title of one of your favorite shows, and just like that. Oh, I know she the track like, you're talking and about. And just like that, and just like that, and just like that. Oomph, oomph, oomph. And it was like funny because it's like maybe that's your favorite show. Is and just like, oh, you're talking <laughs> about Sex in the City. Yes. <laughs> she's doing this. She's just singing the sex. I mean, you're like, oh, it's hard. Uh, it's and, hard, guys. You'll be the judge of it. And whether just like that. if I'm playing cheesy music or if this stuff is and actually just like that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Natasha doesn't have a lot of respect for what I'm doing, but... Oh, wait, one more thing I have to say. This is so funny. Okay. Not only are you DJing and yeah. the house is rumbling yeah. with your sounds, but you want me to watch you DJ. Listen, <laughs> Natasha... That's where it go- gets weird, Moshe. Okay, no, 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 no. You want no, my approval. I do want your approval. I mean, the other day I said, you know, I think I might be kind of good at this, actually. And you said, well, I just think that's a little immature of, a, of something for you to... I believe in the... T- yeah, what if you started quoting Malcolm Gladwell? You're like, I just believe in the 10,000 hours idea. And I just don't... I think it's a little cheesy, uh, childish for you to put in 10,000 hours at this stage in your life. It's like, what do you want me to do? Give up and go, go focus on my taxes? <laughs> go focus on writing a poem? Yeah, that would be good because you're an excellent writer. So I'd Thank rather you so have you be writing. It helps me write because it clears my mind. Mm. It clears my mind. Okay. If you would I like, like to join up. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to join the Patreon, everything stays the same. You just get the podcast. You keep listening. Oh, my the- God. Why don't have we have a thing since you want to be wa- since you want people to watch you DJ mm-hmm. and I don't want to do it. Why don't you have a live stream of you DJing yeah. and people can watch you? That's what we're p- no, proposing. But, no, they have an access to your Mix, your mixtape. They don't have like. It's n- maybe that's what I'm talking about. I, I, a live stream is for the people, you know. Okay. I don't even actually know what that particular part of the tier means, but I just wish people would encourage you, so I don't have to. Well, if you'd like to encourage me, the biggest way that you can encourage us and support this podcast is by joining our Patreon. Uh, you can do that by going to Patreon, P A T r e o n dot com slash endless honeymoon. That's Patreon dot com slash endless honeymoon. And sign up for any of these tiers, and you can get all this cool stuff. No and, more ads. And no more ads. And we'll see you at the quarterly Zoom dinner if you want to join up for. You know, I mean, twenty five bucks a month is not that much. You know. But for five dollars, you can have no ads. Five bucks a month. Come on. And so, maybe we'll listen to your secret. We'll listen to your secret, and you know what? Who knows, you know, who knows what what the future brings. And when I quit this podcast to go on tour uh, for DJing, um, I'm thinking about quitting stand-up actually. And now that I've started DJing, I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to tour, I might as well tour for the music. And just like that. Okay, <laughs> folks, uh, join, a, join, a, join another Patreon. And um, uh, Natasha, what do you say? Shall we take a call? Yes. Okay, now we're going to call Janessa in Charlotte, North Carolina. And just like that. Hey guys. Hey, Hi. How's it going? What would you do if your husband started DJing at 45 or 43? Oh, you know, it's better than like other midlife crisis stuff. So. Thank you. But Thank it could be worse. It could be a lot it could worse. Be better. It could, well, it could be better. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. What's a pitch you have, <laughs> Janessa? Better. Janessa, what's a pitch you have on a better midlife crisis? <laughs> Mm, you know, like maybe a collectible of some sport, Beanie Babies. Oh, I think no, Natasha no, no, would, I hate that. I, I prefer DJ. I think Natasha would prefer <laughs> okay. the DJ. Janessa, how okay. are you? How can we help you? Wait, I want to. I want to figure out some more better midlife oh, crises. Oh, hold on, Janessa. We're gonna. We're gonna. Okay. We're gonna. What's a good midlife crisis, Natasha? Um. Hmm. Oh, that you really want? Oh, you buy a yacht. Oh, right. That would be good for you because you could. You then could you're do, like, oh, let's try it out in Italy. Let's try it out in Greece. Secondhand yacht experience. That is would what be you want. nice. I'm unlikely to buy a yacht. I would buy a sailboat more likely and kill us. <laughs> that seems most likely that I would be like, I'm trying sailing. And then we get into the into the sea and we would drown or, or whatever. Janessa, do you have a pitch for that? And then we can move on to your problem. She said beanie babies. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I, with the yacht thing, like maybe then he could also get into like manscaping, you know, mm. to be on the yacht. So like really oh. like oh. Whole, like hair design. Oh, trimming, body hair design. trimming, trimming my body down to look better on the poop deck. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a or good just idea. Different, different um, artistic expressions of your. I'm not mad hair. at that. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Janessa, yeah. do you want to yeah. join us as the third host on this podcast? <laughs> I would love to. All right. Well, before we do that, let's see how fucked up you are. How can we help you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Mosa. Yeah. So, um, so this is kind of a topic I've heard, sort of like a theme on the show, and it resonated with me. So, my husband and I have been married for about like seven years. We have a little two year old at home. Um, and overall get along really well. We have like a good balance, funny, you know, a good 50, 50, we both work. So like equal contribution. I just feel like it's like a good, we got a good thing going. Um, but the one thing that we are like diametrically opposed is that he sees the world in much more like black, white. I'm much more like gray kind of like, Oh, you know, whatever. So when we argue, and you guys have kind of spoken about this before, but like, is most of the always, black white and I'm the gray? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, well, well, maybe, I don't know, but in arguments, we tend to, this is like the one place where we don't like communicate super well and, and tend to like kind of get in a rut or like get stuck. He always has to be right. And like, he's really good at arguing. So he mm. is just a really, like he can verbatim, he's got like a verbal mind and can like mm. verbatim, just tell me exactly what I said and did wrong. And I get like flustered and I don't know, I kind of talk in circles. I sound like an idiot, but I'm like not getting my point across because I'm more emotional and he's more like logic. Got it. Um, yes. I, I, yeah. I, I've heard enough. He's right. You're wrong. He's cool. <laughs> you're not. I think that we're right. good. Thank you so much for calling in, by the way. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. I think what she's referring to is Moshe's <laughs> linguistic talent. And whenever you're with someone and that's their thing, you know, it's, it can be very challenging because especially when you don't match them, you know, like, I don't remember what I said. I, and I, I said to you today, I said, God, I wish we had video because yeah. I just don't, I don't, you know, it's so hard. It's so hard to know how to, to act. Well, I think that this problem is also, I hate to be reductive like this, but sometimes it really helps. It does feel very gendered. It feels like you're describing. No, the there could totally be a woman who is like always winning. Impossible, from like impossible. Tricking them Imp with their argument skills. <laughs> no, I'm not saying a woman. Can, I'm not at all saying a woman can't win an argument. What I'm saying is the way you're describing the communication of your husband and the way you're describing your own communication feels very familiar, and it feels like it kind of is like very gendered. It feels like men like to go. Uh, if you look at the chart. And then you said da da ba bop, and then I said da ba da bop, and that's how we. That's what it sounds like when you argue. I know, and that's and that's how we arrived here. Oh, another thing he does that I love. He's like, when I bring something up to counter it, he's like, if you want to have a conversation about that, we can do it another time. But right now we're talking about this. So then, like, it even negates like my the way I'm trying to communicate about it. It negates your your tangential subject changing midstream to try to not have the conversation we're having and change it to something else. But sometimes it's related, and I need it for like. Proof. What I can cop to as a <laughs> as a man is that I feel like, and I don't know that men are more logical. I don't know, but I feel like logic should, in an argument, be the thing that it wins. It's like, oh look, I proved my case, and therefore you can't disagree with me any longer. And sometimes I feel Natasha, this is m my fault. She's having an emotional experience, not a logical experience, and so yeah. I'm trying to win an emotional argument with logic, and she's trying to she's trying to win a logical argument with emotion, and it's like the same. It just can't we can't meet in that in that space. Is that kind of right. what you're describing? Yeah, and I think like my ultimate is like I don't really care if I'm right or wrong. You know, I think he much more Me cares too. to be right. So I'm just like you know, whatever it's, it, it's a stupid, whatever the argument is about, it's never really like about the substance because it's like, Oh, who did more with the kid? Or like, you know, it's just like stupid stuff that really doesn't matter, but it's like, I just want to be heard. And I feel like him being like, well, you said this exactly. And I'm like, I don't remember what I said, but like, I just want you to hear me and like validate, I guess what I'm saying. So I guess, I don't know. My, my advice is like, how do I be a better arguer? <laughs> like, or how, do I just like, let it go? And Whatever. It's, it's not a big I, deal. I do have a thought about this. Natasha, do you? Well, I'll say like a lot of times what I do, un is, which is unsuccessful, is shut down. Oh, that's a great Ooh. suggestion. No, I'm just saying. Yes. Have you thought about that? Like fetal position. Yeah. Just like rock no, back and forth. No, and I like just, I just sort of like, I'm like, yes, I don't, you know, like you just agree and then uh, just yeah. try to make it stop. Because, <laughs> right? But that's that's bad. That I, doesn't help. When no, I, I don't that's know. That's what he does. He'll 
he'll like apologize. And I'm like, you're just a pot. Like, I, I know that's like very cliche to be like, oh, you're just a pot. But I think he just wants it to stop. So he's like, whatever like but I do the same thing I'm like okay whatever you're right and then this is over and we can move on that's certainly not there's got to be a better thing to do I have a thought yeah okay maybe Moshe knows I mean I don't know if I know I I know what I want as a man and again I feel like I'm in real territory of like kind of backwards women are like this men are like this territory but I do think there's something to what I'm about to say what I want in those situations is, yeah, I want to be right or whatever. But what I really get frustrated, here's what I get frustrated about. Like I, I cop to the fact that like, you know, doing a, a a transcript, like a court stenographer transcript of what happened and then being like, and therefore I'm right, isn't the greatest way to communicate with somebody that I care about who's having an emotional experience. What I get frustrated about is when I get, I go crazy. I bet your husband does too, is because she's not focusing on the stenographer transcript she's starting to make up details that aren't even that, that don't adhere to to reality they're not real right because yeah, she's I'm not like grasping right grasping. she's not focusing on what happened she's focusing on how she feels and i'm like but wait what about what happened that's not what happened it didn't go down like that it didn't happen like that so what i actually want in those situations is for natasha or and i would assume same for you not for you to cop and go you're right uh, cause that's just like letting that him win or letting me win. It's to be clear about what you want. And so when you said just now, um, I just want to be heard. Like I would say, say something like that in the argument. You know what? I don't care what happened. I want you to hear me, how I'm feeling right now. And I bet, I bet that if you said that, that he would be able to stop the like Spock, like, well, captain, it doesn't quite <laughs> adhere to the to the ship's logs, you know. He would be able to stop, and you just go. I don't. I, I'm not trying to to convince you that I'm right. I'm. I want you to hear how I'm feeling right now. Because if you said that to me, Tosh, I feel like I. I don't know for sure, but I feel like I could stop and hear it. It is funny though, because like you're telling me what to say to you, so now I'm going to try to remember it. But it is a script that you've given me. <laughs> but wait, what is but it? Do you feel like uh, one person always loses? Or one, part. I, like, but, I feel but, like I always lose. No, nah, yeah, even when I have the issue, I'm like apologizing at the end. Well, I think that Moshe, you often tell me you were right about that. I'm really sorry if I hurt you, or you know, I'm sorry I wasn't. Sometimes I'll be like stressed out about an interaction we had that wasn't like bad, but it wasn't good. And then later he'll apologize. And he's like, I'm yeah. sorry if I was in a bad mood. And I was like, oh yeah, now that I'm thinking about that is what it is. And you know, that brings us closer together. So, well, I'll tell you why I if do. He's, if he's never able to do that, then that's probably an issue. I'll tell you yeah, why. He is. And he does the same kind of thing. Yeah. I'll tell you why I do that because of in years of being an AA, one of the biggest things that I have, I'm sure I've said this before. One of the biggest things that I've carried with me from my years in AA is this idea that when you are upset, your job, and this maybe is your job too, your job is to look at at what you did wrong in the interaction, leaving aside any wrong that the other person did in the interaction. Not it doesn't mean you forgive them. It means when you're right. when or me or me when I'm thinking about an interaction I had with Natasha, I try unsuccessfully at times, sometimes I need a couple of days to do it, to throw out whatever I think she did wrong and to only focus on what I, the mistakes I made and how I could have done that interaction better. Then I go and I apologize for those things because it doesn't mean it absolves Natasha for anything that she did wrong. It means that whatever she did wrong isn't my business. I can't, I can't go into her brain and make her apologize for it. I can only find out what I did wrong. That's the training that I had in AA. And that's, it's like, that is as close to like my life credo as I live by. When I'm upset, I leaving aside the wrongdoings of others, I focus on my own self. How could I have done it better? What did I do wrong? How do I apologize? So that's what I would say for both of you. But for you too, is to just uh, focus on what you could have done better in the interaction. And if, if you feel... Like, I, mean, I think this whole idea of who wins at the end of an argument in a marriage is kind of pointless. You know, right. in the moment I want to win, I want to win the argument in the moment because I love to argue, but I never go like, and fuck yeah, I vanquished my wife. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. But yeah, just, you know, couples therapy too could maybe help you guys. And, yeah. you know, it's really stressful having a young child. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's hard. It's It's a lot to balance and it's a lot. And I feel like, you know, communication can sometimes go to the wayside, especially with a young kid, because so much of your energy goes into like protecting and, you know, watching a child. Have you thought Hard about to right. focus on your your relationship? Have you thought about when he's really in his logic thing and he's about to win, just becoming like really demure sexually, just being like, 
and like, you know, like making cat faces and stuff and trying to change the subject in that way. And then he'll yeah, that, that just could, totally shape shifting into like a totally different person. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I, that's actually like, wait. Am I in a portal? That's Did actually that's dimensions? actually great advice. When you're in that argument, become a different person, be be false and and act in a way that isn't genuine to you and see if that helps at all. That could be really good, yeah, right? I'll try it. You should try that, hey, Natasha. You know. No, but I do think yeah. trying to win, I think that's the problem. Is like men try to win. I don't know, maybe women try to win too. But this whole idea of winning, there's no winning. And you, you then you have to go to bed and wake up with the person the next day. So all maybe you, instead of trying to win, you try to just communicate a little bit, try to penetrate right. him yeah. in that way, you know, try to like, and listen. I think he's just kind of like, he's like a judgier person. Like he just wants, I think he thinks he's like right in most situations. So like, if that makes him feel better, no, 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 you know. no, no, you have no, to no. share a worldview, especially uh-uh. when you're like raising a child. It's like, what if yeah. you think, I mean, that's where it's going to get really annoying. Cause like every yeah. single every single six months, you're going to have like new decisions you need to make about your child, like what's safe and what schools and you know, right. what, how much you're going to let them watch TV. And it's like, if, if you disagree about stuff like that, and then I don't know, it just feels like a recipe for disaster. I got a, I got a magic phrase for you that I think will, will work Okay. in the middle of this thing. When he's in his, in his logic zone, which I relate so much to, cause it sounds like exactly how I communicate. If you said, right now you're trying to win an argument, but I'm just trying to tell you how I'm feeling. I, I feel like, that. like that'll penetrate him and he it'll, and it will force him to change tactics. It sounds like he cares about you. And he, I, if he's anything like me, he cares a great deal about you. I care so much about you, Janessa. I, I, it hurts sometimes. <laughs> but he, he cares a great feel deal it. about you, but he gets caught up in in the rhetoric the rhetorical like, but i am a man right he just gets caught up in the rhetorical <laughs> like justification of of the logic thing i i relate to that so much but if but he cares more about you than he cares about being right he's just stuck in in the right zone and so if you just yeah. say right now you're trying to win an argument the problem with any phrase like that, though, is the second time you use it, he'll be like, ah, don't you do that fucking right now. You're trying to win an argument. But it's thing. hard to argue with. I think it's okay to say it a couple times. I like that. Try that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will. And also, you good. know, I, I think relationships are all about trying to make small moments like a little better and become a little closer if you can. Yeah. So that's just something to work on. Have you thought about opening up your relationship oh my God. To, to like multiple partners? <laughs> I found that, uh, that I found that in my mind that would work very well. In my when I think about that, it seems like yeah, it would work. I don't see how it could hurt. You no. know, just the more the merrier. <laughs> I think know. that's the type you're looking for. It much. doesn't seem like it could hurt. Janessa's right. There's I can't. <laughs> Your see, husband's lucky to have you. You're I, laid back. I can't see a way that that could backfire. I don't see. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. And like I said, with the midlife crisis, it could be better, but it could always be worse. That's right. Hey, that is a really good. And you know what? It's not that damaging except to my, like, except our orally. Or or orally. Oh, you mean DJing? Yeah, DJing. The truth is multiple partners can be damaging orally too. Because you'll never (laughs) unhear that. And a lot of different other leads too. Janessa, you're hired. You're the third mic on this podcast. We appreciate you calling in. (laughs) Okay, thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was good. Good reminder for me. I mean, what I related to was, it feels frustrating when the person you're arguing with feels like an unreliable narrator about your own interaction. But then it's like, who cares? They're your partner. I was thinking about the way I argue with you sometimes while she was saying that. Yeah, I know. It's like I, I, I wish that we could always be a united front all the time. That would be nice. It would be. We'll get there, hon. Someday, maybe when we're probably 80. have to work on it. Well, let's work on it. We're working on it now. Um, Natasha, yes. do you want to hear a secret or two? Okay. Hi, Moshe and Natasha. Um, I fucking love you both. Um, Fuck yeah. Natasha is definitely the better of the two. Okay. She's hotter. Come on. Fuck Anyways, yeah. um, I just listened to your newest secret dump and heard the guy talking about the woman who had the kink of being covered in blood. Reminded me of a time I was hooking up with a guy and we're in the middle of having sex and he pulls a tube of fake blood off of his nightstand right next to the bed and dumps it all over, you know, pours it all over my chest. Um, didn't know what to do. I was a little drunk. I thought this guy was really hot and I, you know, uh, have no standards. So I said awkwardly, hey, let's just get in the shower. And we continued and... Till, you know, he finished. Um, 
His uh, major point is that he was a butcher. <laughs> um, he's married now. Um, probably has a kid or two. I don't know if he's killed anybody. Maybe. Okay. Um, thanks. I hate that his sexual pleasure is related to his job. Well, he probably took the job because he thought it was kind of hot on some level. Yeah, but then what? Is he jerking off with the meat? That's a great question. <laughs> and I don't know the answer. But I will say to that caller who's hooking up with the blood person, I, I think he maybe broke up with her. I can't remember. But that would be a good solution. That would be a good middle ground. You know, if somebody has a kink that freaks you out, you can do the fake version and give them a little bit of, a little bit, you know? I have to say, if a guy did that and it was fake blood, I'd probably go for it. Well, I have to say that if I had a blood fetish, I wouldn't um, bust it out, bust out the fake blood vial without any explanation in the <laughs> middle of a sexual encounter. I would be Maybe like, he was, they were young. I'd be like, let's get coffee. I need to tell you some stuff and yeah. then bring it in. But um, yeah, wow, butcher. You could handle some fake blood on my tits, couldn't you? I mean, that it wouldn't turn me on. Like, right. I know. But if it mean. would turn you on, I would do it for you. I don't think it would. All right. Maybe let's... if my tits were bigger. Then you don't want. <laughs> then it would like maybe look. I don't know. What? I don't know. I don't know. That's how I was like. Nobody wants it. Uh, perky blood. They want buxom blood. <laughs> kind of like more like a like a uh, like a like Russ a ham- Myers movie or something. <laughs> a what? Or like you know like the big the big beautiful titted super villains of the oh of like the 60s yeah kinda. like I could see like a James mm. Bond even idea of like she was Got like it. saving someone from blood. Yeah, no. I don't know. I'll do I'm it for you. I'm just trying to get with the fantasy. I don't Why know. Why don't you get breast implants and <laughs> I will get a vial of fake blood and we'll see what happens. Okay. All right, let's hear another secret. This is a secret. So my daughter is seven years old. She's learning how to swim. Uh, she's still a little shy about, not shy, but like afraid to like, she didn't know how to keep water out of her mouth and nose. So we got her a pair of goggles that covers her eyes and her nose. And since we did that, she's able to like just jump into the water and swim around and she's great. The problem for me is no matter how cute I think she is, when she's wearing these goggles, she looks so fucking dumb. And it's very hard for me to not like think about that while I'm playing with her in the pool. And I definitely just can't tell her mom or anybody in my family or anybody anywhere how dumb I think my daughter looks because I love her and she's so cute. But with these goggles on, she looks so dumb. (laughs) Okay. I'll wait. Hopefully you play this someday. I do you have a thought. I have a thought. Yeah. Well, first of all, they shouldn't be. They should get off of those goggles anyway. Uh, Get some. Oh, uh, learn how to swim normally. Like have her learn how have but they should just be practicing like that. Fair enough. But my take on this is this, I know I say this from time to time. And it's also dangerous to jump in with those big goggles. This is the reason that the secret dump exists. It's for <laughs> this guy who who has an innocuous secret that truly he should never share with another person. <laughs> right? Just because he can't tell his wife. I mean, she's going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? If you know? she hears it. I mean, she should just be like, fucking what is wrong with you? That's our daughter. But it's real. That guy's head is like, oh my God, my daughter looks like a fucking water dork, right? And he can't, there's no recourse for him. There's no place, there's no place for him in this universe. And without the endless honeymoon secret done, he would be alone. But he's got a place in this community, in this no judgment zone for only $5 a month. You too. <laughs> I just think this is exactly why we have the secret dump, and I love it. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great secret, and it, the best news is she won't wear those things forever, and so this will just be a temporary uh, piece of, of judgment from you to your innocent, cherubic daughter. All right, let's hear another one. One more. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Moshe. Um, I have a really funny secret that I think Natasha will appreciate. Um, or at least I think it's really funny, but also harmless. So my boyfriend tends to constantly be busy when we need to go grocery shopping. So <laughs> if I'm going to do this grocery shopping by myself and he's going to get out of doing that collective labor, what should be collective labor, 
when we split the grocery bill via Venmo, I now charge him a service fee every time <laughs> I go grocery shopping and he's not there with me. It always ranges between 5 to $10, depending on what the bill is. Um, he also makes a lot more money than I do. So I don't really feel bad about this in any way. And I think it's only fair because, like Natasha says all the time, women always do more. And Moshe, don't even try to fight that because it's <laughs> fucking right. All right. Bye. I love you guys. Uh, she had you, Moshe. I was about to say, <laughs> oh, man, I guess I got nothing to say. I kind of like this. This She charges her boyfriend an, a surcharge for doing the grocery shopping. But they should, first of all. He should be, if he makes more money than her, you should, who wants to go grocery shopping? That's annoying. Like mm -hmm. you should tell him, listen, I think that we should split it. All this invisible labor. Like why, if I'm going to go every time, then how about, you know, you have it off and you pay for the groceries. Although a hundred percent of it. Yes. He can pay for the groceries. Mm -hmm. She's going to do it. Or at least like, I don't know if, if I don't know what the f particulars are financially, but I would pitch something like that. Like. Because that is a lot for you to go do it. And I did Instacart during the pandemic a lot of times. And it is so expensive. Like to have someone deliver groceries to you, it was like, it was, I just could not believe how expensive it was. So anyway, I'm just saying nobody, who wants to go to a grocery store and spend two hours and, and be like stuck in traffic, or like stuck in the grocery. It just sucks, man. I hate it. I would say she I would, should. I would make him pay for the groceries. I would say she should very slowly increase the surcharge like a frog in boiling water and see how high she can get that surcharge up before he notices. So five to 10 does not seem like it cuts it. Next, tr next time, try $250. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Roll the bones. All I, right. I do think it's important when you're in a relationship to have boundaries around that. Because sometimes like if, if you find yourself struggling financially and you're with someone who makes more and you're doing more, I just feel like there should be like more arrangement around that. I agree. That's where communication comes into it. They should talk about this probably, right? right? But you know, the, you might just be a generous person and you're not paying attention. When you're married, it's a little different because you kind of share money. Well, the problem is like, what does she want him to do? She wants him to do the grocery shopping. Well, she's, it seemed like they went together she, yeah, but, every week. Yeah, but no, no, no. But and now he she never go, wants to go. But, but now, now she, she goes, goes alone. alone. But she wants him to go alone. He's a man. That doesn't even make oh sense. God. What, a man's going to go shopping for groceries? She wants him, or they, do they even, split it. And this is an honest question. Do they let men into grocery stores alone? All right. I'm curious. You're, you're trying to distract from the argument. I'm with the argument. I agree with you, and I'm trying to uh, bring levity. But will I, I will say that you and I had an agreement, like, you know, every other week, I think when we were dating or living together, like, mm -hmm. I would do the groceries, but I would pay for them. And then you would do the groceries, but you would pay for them. So what's the difference between, like, him paying and you going all the time? Well, here's the problem. When you get married and you come, if you decide to combine your resources, you can't play games like this anymore. Sometimes you'll try to do that. You'll be like, I paid for it. It's like, what do you mean you paid for it? We paid for it. We pay for everything. Everything is everything. Our money is split 50-50. And no, Natasha did not like many people assume, make me sign a prenup, okay? She didn't. Yeah, because I know Moshe's going to make a lot of money one day as a DJ. <laughs> Wait, maybe this is how you become like really rich, Moshe. I would love that. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh my gosh. All right, Natasha. I couldn't imagine. Let's do another call and then let's go home. Okay. Even though we are currently at our house. I have a question, Moshe, really Yes. Quick. Do you think that um, you could... DJ like music that was slightly different? I don't. Why would I want to do that? Like what about? I'm playing the music that my heart desires. You want me to play music for you? What do you <laughs> want me to play? Funky Town? Yeah, I like Funky Town. You do. You love it's your favorite no, song. No, but I think that like techno, techno is very like What do you want specific. me to? What, what is it that you'd like me to play? Like, Morrissey? No, no. Like, um, I don't know. Different, like, like a variety of. of a variety of what? A variety. You want to of, play Sonic Youth? Like, what if you Hits sampled from, some things that were like cool, and then also yeah, like what Blind Melon? Oh yeah. Why do you think I like Blind Melon? Because you're a fucking melon head, and you know it. No, I'm just saying, like, yeah, maybe some some hip hop elements or some some I don't know, like early. Ooh, like like what if you had like um some West Indie music? That would be cool, and like you could West you could, Indie. You could pretend like you're at one you're of West Indian. Yeah, like like Jamaican sounds. If apparently you haven't been listening, uh, uh, one of the main things that I like that I've discovered after twenty years off of DJing is something called Afro house, and that it's it's Afro Cuban like. inspired house music. I don't like that. Okay, well, honey, I'm not doing it for you. Okay. You know how you like interior design? Mm -hmm. 
You know, you like interior. What if you started incorporating more of a like hard rock cafe element into your I interior? I listen to you. No, honey. On, on- All I'm asking is what if you just started doing interior design, but it was more from a like graffiti perspective? What if you started doing interior design, but you use denim for the furniture? It's like, I'm just saying techno is very specific. There's a reason why it's never become like a music that is that popular. It's incredibly popular. <laughs> that people would ever play like, yeah, I hear you. You never heard the song that goes, da na 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 da na 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 da na da na You ever heard that song? Yeah. All I'm saying is that was a popular song. Not my kind of song. It's a little too mainstream. <laughs> but no, Natasha, I will not be adjusting my hobby to make it uh, more <laughs> aesthetically pleasing for you. I'm just trying to think of, you know, what are better midlife crises, like trying to just have a little, you know. You know how you're a really good dresser? Mm-hmm. What if you started doing more like menswear? Because that's what I like. I like menswear. I don't really like like what you wear. I would never wear. So what if you do it more well, like what, what I would wear? What happens when what your hobby is like like affecting me? Like, oh, maybe that's why golf is good because they leave the house. <laughs> They're not like playing techno in the house. That's why I go surfing. I guess we just need to get you some parties to go DJ at. Here's an idea. Why don't you get a hobby? <laughs> I'm working on it. Imagine a world in which you got a hobby and I was doing a uh, uh, sideline quarterbacking, armchair quarterbacking of your hobby. Listen. What if you crocheted with more purple? Listen, Moshe. And what if you crocheted with, uh, instead of doing a landscape, what if you were doing more fruit? I want to take more time myself i want you to take more more time for yourself you know i get very invested in what i'm doing and i'm writing and performing and acting and it's hard to like oh you're a movie star so it's hard for you to to start devoting a lot of time and i spend a lot of time trying to like you know fulfill obligations Mm -hmm. and you know it's like a lot all right well honey let me know when you find a hobby uh we got a caller standing by shall we go to that person yes let's call noah in new york city you should also define hobby though, Moshe. I do have like many interests. It's just like devoting myself to something full time that isn't my career. As Noah, hard. Noah, Noah. Question for you. Hello? Hello? Hey, Noah, what's your hobby? What's your main hobby? My hobby. Jeez. Well, I like to, I like to write. Um, I like to write stories. I just realized... Uh, <laughs> Yes. When you're an artist, you don't need a hobby. Uh, there is something to that. But I'm an artist and I need hobbies. I need to get out of the I thing that I do all day long. Noah, sorry. We're in the middle of a fight. Uh, how can we help you? Uh, okay, yeah. So I'll break it down for you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, um, I was headed out to work and uh, I run into the super uh, of the building. My fiance and I live in. Um, he was in the, yeah, just, you know, exchange hellos. It's great. Hello. And then, you know, I'm at work a couple hours later. I get a text uh, and he says that he's taking a photography class um, and he'd love for me to join him in the basement of the building uh, for a little photo shoot. Uh, and my fiance is, you know, she's welcome to join us. Uh, you know, so first off, you know, I've seen the basement, low ceilings, it's dirty, very little light. It's a terrifying place. So, you know, I, I never texted him back. Uh, and then a couple of days later, I'm coming home from work and he's, you know, he's like unlocking his bike from in front of the apartment. Um, and he snaps a photo of me. Oh my God. Uh, you know, so I'm, you know, I, I just got off work. I, I don't want to yell at anybody. I'm just, you know, I want to chill out. So, you know, I just say hello and I go upstairs. Uh, and then, you know, I stew on it for a couple of days and I'm like, man, that's messed up. Uh, so yeah, a few days later I run into him, uh, and I'm like, Hey man, you just, you can't be taking photos of people, uh, without their consent. And I need the negative and I need any sort of, you know, digital copy, uh, that you have of said photo. Uh, you know, so he gets very defensive. Apparently, he's like, you know, he's like a six-year-old, like super of an apartment building, like street photographer. Uh, really, you know, and uh, yeah, so he goes inside and he brings out this big sheet of negatives, and uh, he says the photo he took of me didn't turn out. So he just like rips this little like negative off the sheet and hands it to me. It's a picture of another guy, uh, like in front of our. Uh, so I'm like, man, you know. You know, I'm speaking loud enough so like everybody in our paper thin wall department can hear me, you know, being very calm about it. Uh, just like, you know, w- what do we do? Like, I mean, he's obviously after me, my fiance. I'm, you know, I will go in the basement before, before, you know, she'll get down there, I hope. Uh, so, yeah, what do we do? This is great. Well, first of all, he has your number because he's your super. He has my number. He because- also has the keys to our apartment. Hmm. 
Mm. I'm not liking that detail. <laughs> he sounds a little, well, because he, he sounds inappropriate. He shouldn't be asked. Yeah, uh, well, also, I mean, one it's one thing to not return a text, but then it's another thing that you, everybody knows you can't just like take pictures of people, you know, without their permission. And then, oh, and what did he say when you said that? When you said you can't be taking pictures of people? I mean, he was like, you know, well, I'm a street photographer. Uh, you know, if you're out in the street, you don't need someone's consent. It's like, yeah, I looked all this shit up, like, you know, after the incident. No, but then but that's like, where also, you say, yeah. but that's where you're like, you have to be uh, much more like um, dominating. You have to say, well, listen, man, I don't like it and don't do it to me. Like, I think you have to be a, because he's like, oh, well, the way we do it in the streets is, uh, right. and it's like, no, yeah, no yeah. I don't, well, you know, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what the rules are. Don't do it to me. Like, maybe you need to like kind of alpha him a little bit and you need to to have your girlfriend or his fiance on board because really you could report him, but you also don't want to start drama with yeah. him. I mean, a cab all day. That's why I turned to EHP first. Like, I mean, yeah, I told him like if we were in the street, like I'd knock, I'd knock him the fuck out. Uh, but you know, anyway, you know, I've run into him a few times since then and he doesn't make eye contact. So he is afraid, which is good. Yeah. Like, no, we are an anti a cab podcast and we think you should call the sheriff. That's what we think. No, here, <laughs> Sorry, let me I, this. I think that you, Here's my prediction. I think that if you didn't live in New York, I would say you should look for a new place to live. But because that's so difficult in New York. I mean, uh, your place does look really beautiful. What I would say is I think you should find out. the ceiling and the the candelabra and the divider. It's all really nice. I think you should find out if you've solved the problem. Because I have a feeling this guy. Okay, let's find a charitable uh, interpretation of him because it's easy to find the villainous one and it's probably accurate but the charitable interpretation of this guy is that he's lonely and he just wants a little piece of Noah ass and he wanted to fuck you in the basement and he's lonely and he takes photos so of men what? no just let me t- hear me out I'm not saying this justifies anything I'm saying I'm saying how do you wrap, wrap your mind around who he is yes he could be like a weird diabolical killer that's going to come in and kill you which is why I would say if you didn't live in, in New York to find a new place but you're not going to do that so the charitable view that you, you can you'll find out if it's true is he might be just be a lonely guy that thinks you're hot and was trying to hit on you and it's not appropriate and it's not cool and it sucks but you confronted him you embarrassed him and maybe you've solved the problem maybe now he's like oh my right. god but, back- if he, but if he comes back if and is relentless back. then you've got an issue but i do think alphaing him a little bit uh just to let him know like it's not happening unfortunately the 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 yeah. the, the story is very obvious what you need to do you do nothing and see if the problem has been solved if the problem has not been solved, the reality is you have to get out of there. <laughs> you must move. Oh, you, you think if, if he if he comes back aggressive, he's yeah. the super, and you're what you're gonna have a war well, no, with he your can like report him, but yeah, to who to the owner, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could do and that. Yeah, we're a little removed. behind in rent right now. So. <laughs> Are you yeah. really? We don't have much. We don't have much ground. To That's that, hilarious. You know? Hey, just so you know, I do need another extension on the rent owner, but <laughs> I also need an ally in my fight against your employee. I I just think maybe I really feel like maybe has he done anything since you confronted him? He hasn't looked me in the eyes, and I think I broke his heart, which kind of makes me feel bad. Well, you should. I mean, I get why you feel bad, but you sometimes you have to break people's hearts that are doing inappropriate stuff. I feel like you've solved this problem. You know, I had a super once when I was living in my last apartment, and she I asked if I could get a dog, and she said no, they weren't allowed, and I said okay, and then I got a dog. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> she just kind of looked away. <laughs> I had, I'm just saying, it's like, it, it just... You, Pablo and Mr. Cutie give us hope every day. <laughs> yeah, I had, I, when I first moved to LA, I lived in a paper thin situation next to this old couple. Uh, they were like 60 years old. And, you know, the neighborhood I, I moved into is like a very hip neighborhood. And I did feel a little bad, but they asked me, they were like, would you mind keeping it down past seven? And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. The neighborhoods, I didn't say this, but the, the neighborhoods moved on. Natasha? Oh, no, that's, I, I said it. Uh, Natasha kicked my foot, which I think was code for you've said this story no, on the podcast already. I was already. just enjoying listening to you talk, honey. And my, <laughs> I wasn't kicking you. Um, yeah. I think you've solved it, dude. I really do. I think I think if he won't look you in the eye, that's kind of the best case scenario. You've now he'll never bother you again. That's what I think. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You guys added a lot of color to the situation, and yeah, thank you. You know, I'm I'm not going to cry myself to sleep tonight. So thank you. Appreciate yeah. That. W- will we say ASAP? 
ASAB on this. Do more writing, honey. We say ASAB on this podcast. You know what that is? All supers are bastards. You know how some people hate you know landlords? Yeah. You know a lot of people hate landlords these days? We, I heard about that. We love landlords. We hate supers. So that's our vibe. <laughs> All right, Noah. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Thanks Good luck, so dude. much, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Appreciate that. Natasha. Yeah? You gave great advice. I did. And you were funny and charismatic, and I love you. I love you, too. I guess the episode's over. But if you'd like to leave us a secret. Give us a call at 213-222-8608. If you'd like to be on the podcast, you can email us. At endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail. We're on Instagram. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. Subscribe We're on to YouTube. our YouTube. We're on Patreon now. Patreon.com slash Endless Honeymoon to support this podcast. And I'm excited about the Patreon. It's very interactive. So that's why I told Moshe he's got to like work mm-hmm. a little less because we want to do more stuff for the podcast. If so. we got you through the pandemic, consider getting our child through college. <laughs> right. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's see everyone later. Let's do it. <laughs> now, here we go. We're going to see you later.